Hey everyone, welcome to Logan's Mosh Pick. Glad to have you here. Do me a favor and please subscribe if you haven't already. Today we're going to do another episode of the Setlist Snub Series, the place where we talk about a few songs from different bands that don't get played live very much. However, I'm going to give you some reasons why I feel like those underrated songs actually deserve to get played live more often than they do. If there's someone specific you guys want me to talk about in a future episode of this series, please leave a comment down below. I'll check your feedback. Today we're going to analyze some overlooked Def Leppard tracks. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Def Leppard is my favorite band, period. I think the best time to blast Def Leppard is any time. Maybe I'll name my future kid Def Leppard. <laughs> I've been a fan of theirs for quite a while. Pyromania and Hysteria were two of the first albums I ever listened to. Practically every time I hit the road, those CDs came with me. If I'm having a bad day, Def Leppard, more often than not, are hotter than hot in a lot of good way. They cheer me up instantly. I can't miss a chance to talk about them. I had the privilege of seeing them live a few years ago when they toured with Journey. They sounded fantastic. An unreal night. I still feel stoked thinking about it. Whether you love them or hate them, you must respect Def Leppard's uncanny resiliency. During their run, drummer Rick Allen lost his arm in a horrific accident, and guitarist Steve Clark suffered an alcohol-related demise. Numerous bands would have thrown in the towel after such a string of ugly circumstances. However, Def Leppard's resolve remained intact, and they ultimately stayed in the music business. They didn't become done Leopard. In certain ways, this has probably in turn inspired fans of theirs to never give up on pursuing whatever passions they may possess. It's absolutely true for me. Before we take the lid off the container of underappreciated tunes, I want to briefly touch on some reasons why all bands, not just Def Leppard, keep particular tracks close and seemingly act afraid to get near others. I recap this set of reasons every single time in order to appease new viewers, but if you're familiar with how the Set List Snub series works, kindly skip ahead a few minutes. The first reason is casual fans willingly choose to only drink from the elite well. Bulging with songs that have received abnormally high levels of attention over the years. For example, just scratching the surface, tunes like Photograph, Rock of Ages, Foolin', and Pour Some Sugar On Me. Casual fans steer clear of songs that don't receive heavy airplay. The next reason would be barbaric pressure emanating from fans and even fellow band members basically saps bands of pushing their free will toward the set list. Rather, they feel extremely compelled to perform their most acclaimed tracks live to satisfy the bulk of fans in attendance. If fans go home in a proud state of mind, then the odds of them buying tickets to an upcoming show scheduled on the tour gets boosted dramatically. Reason 3 boils down to songs found on albums which unfortunately fail to meet sales expectations. Take Def Leppard's 2002 album X, for instance. Songs originating on it will probably never see the light of day live simply because a ton of fans don't exactly regard them with warm feelings. The fourth reason involves a situation in which a group occasionally becomes <sighs> totally exhausted by one of their own creations. So much so that they sooner or later exclude it from the set list. Pretend like it never happened. Reason 5 revolves around a crucial distinction between casual fans and hardcore fans. You see, casual fans who only care about the classics, not deep cuts, far outnumber hardcore fans. There's a disproportionate amount of casual fans floating around. Due to that, their voices carry greater impact, and they typically get to decide which songs are allowed into shows. The final reason rears its ugly head when tunes that were coddled in the studio try to repeat what happened on stage. Sadly, stages are ill-equipped to compete with the vast technology applied in the studio. Therefore, songs that added a substantial digital presence to their makeup can't keep up live. Now that we've examined potential reasons, let's discuss a few intriguing Def Leppard stats I gathered from setlist.fm. I'll put a link to setlist.fm in the description for you. 
To get to satwest.fm in the conventional way, simply pull up Google, type in any band or solo artist you want, add the word tour statistics at the end, and click on the first result. Then you'll find yourself in an unparalleled musical facility, home to boundless songs, albums, and tour information. According to Celeste.fm, Def Leppard started touring in 1978, and during their long career, Rock of Ages has climbed to the top of the list live. Def Leppard has gorged that song by playing it 1,949 times live. To put this whopping number in perspective, imagine you set a goal to listen to Rock of Ages exactly 1,949 times in a row, non-stop, without any breaks. How long would it take? My calculator says 483,352 seconds, or put it in simpler terms, 5.6 days. Close to a full week. Well, that's enough stats. Let's quickly break down five underrated Def Leppard tunes ranked in descending order, each off a different album. And I'll put a link to all five songs in the description as well. Please drop other underrated Def Leppard songs besides these five in the comments. First of all, I chose Rocks Off, pulled from Def Leppard's debut album, On Through the Night. Rocks Off has appeared live approximately 261 times, 13% compared to Rock of Ages. Does Def Leppard have a rock fetish? Look at how many song titles by them include the word rock. Rock of Ages, Rocks Off, Rock Rock Till You Drop, Let's Get Rocked, Rocket, Rock Brigade, and the list goes on. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to find a nice rock so I can trade it for an autograph. Rocks Off is a pretty amped up tune. The whole Hysteria album sounds far more watered down. Yet, Rocks comes across as a million times more raw. Like Def Leppard didn't bother editing. I wouldn't be surprised if they rattled off one take and okayed it. It contains an ironclad main riff and luminous vocals. Interestingly enough, the guitar parts sounded more pronounced than the vocals, and I don't mind at all. Rocks Off definitely thrives among the manliest of Def Leppard tracks. It'll probably put calluses on your ears. Next, let's give Billy's Got a Gun a shot from Pyromania, my personal favorite Def Leppard album. Billy's Got a Gun has been fired on tour 210 times. This one reminds me why I fell in love with Def Leppard in the first place. I absolutely went crazy over the head-banging riff, not to mention the creepy vocals produced by Joe Elliott along with the tense lyrics. With such a heightened emphasis being thrust on mental health these days, I think Billy's Got a Gun was ahead of its time. It seeks to understand why a person's mind gradually decays until they become a monster, past the point of no return to the point where they become a danger to themselves and those who they come into contact with. Def Weber does an extraordinary job of expressing both sides. The desire to inflict harm in a cold tone and to escape it through powerful cries. Dark enough subject matter that I thought twice about liking it, but for Billy's Got a Gun, I'd still call it my favorite song, beating out the four other competitors on my list. After Billy's Got a Gun, Lady Strange waltzes in, representing High and Dry with a label reading 187 times. Lady Strange premiered as one of Def Leppard's earliest love songs. Although its brother, Bringing on the Heartbreak, typically steals all the credit. Make no mistake though, this one is no slouch either. It's funny because the majority of love songs move at turtle speed, but Lady Strange remains relatively spry. Similar to when you meet a wonderful girl or guy for the first time and you're, you know, babbling incoherently to your friends about how great they are. Lady Strange also benefits from those stunning Def Leppard harmonious vocals that they utilize so well. For Def Leppard, strength very much lies in numbers. Moving on to Excitable, part of the album that sent Def Leppard hurling into the stratosphere, Hysteria. This album drew a line within the community. Some people approved of the docile approach Def Leppard pioneered on Hysteria. Others felt livid and dug their heels into the heaviness associated with their first three albums. Personally, I like both eras, but I'm a bit more loyal to the pre-Hysteria era. After Hysteria, I believe Def Leppard got knocked down a peg. Hysteria became an overnight sensation, and they were basically competing against themselves trying to top that album. Back to Excitable, I'm not excited to let you know that this song has merely made it onto the live circuit on 152 occasions. 
Decisively less rugged than previous efforts, sure, but still a major crowd pleaser. Inserting some robotic pieces was a cool idea. The processing of Excitable and the whole Hysteria album, for that matter, appeared quite a bit more meticulous. They ironed out extra wrinkles. Lyrics just rolled right off Joe Elliott's tongue. Of course, a couple signature, Come on! And yes! Got blended in for good measure. Def Leppard went really repetitive here, and it results in a catchy, well-rounded tune. Finally, I'll end the list with a song called Stand Up, Kick Love Into Motion, landing on the Adrenalize album. Probably the last Def Leppard album where I responded, wow. Stand Up has clearly stayed seated at shows since it hasn't been performed at all zero times outside the studio. You can definitely still notice Hysteria's influence hanging over their heads. Joe Biden would love this song. One line says, there's an empty chair at my table. Joe Elliott poured on the charm here. That's nothing new. Def Leppard and Love songs have a very rich history together. Pretty much every song on Adrenalize reflected love. The title Adrenalize kind of seemed like a stretch. I'd call it hopeless romantic or something. While it definitely wasn't mind-blowing, Stand Up, Kick Love into Motion still tugged at my heartstrings. It unlocked a reassuring protective instinct while I listened. Even though I prefer something more exhilarating, pound for pound, there's no excuse why Def Leppard can't toss it on the set list now and then, at least on Valentine's Day. That does it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed make sure to like comment and subscribe if you haven't already i really appreciate the support i'll see you next time until then rock on